Hello, my name is Tim Shoebridge. Welcome to this video. This video is actually a follow-up to the Behringer System 55 review that I did a little while ago. Um, I do get lots of questions about the gear that I review in my videos. And uh, I think the most common question about the System 55 range of modules relates to their oscillators uh, because there are some choices there. Um, and I think you know people want to know, well, what, why are there those choices? What do the different modules do? What's the difference between them? And which ones should they buy for their own setup? Um, I'm not going to tell you which ones you should buy. Um, but what I will do is I'll tell you what I know about these modules, having used them for quite a long time, and I will tell you the decisions that I made when I was creating my own rig of System 55 modules, um, you know, and what decisions I made and why I made those decisions. So that is what's coming up in this video. There's not going to be any music examples, anything fancy like that. We're just going to be looking at a handful of modules, uh, doing a tiny bit of patching with them, but not very much. Um, and it's going to be quite a lot of talking, just talking about what these modules actually do. That's what's coming up. If that's of interest to you, then fantastic. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so let's talk about the basic choices we have in terms of the oscillator modules themselves. Uh, we have a 921 oscillator module and we have a combination of 921A plus 921B. Those are our basic choices, um, but we will find some other choices a bit later on. Now the 921 is a self-contained oscillator module. Uh, you can provide it with a pitch CV to set the pitch coming from your keyboard or sequencer or whatever. You've got a potentiometer on board where you can set the master tuning of the oscillator. It's got a wide range of frequencies on that potentiometer. Um, and then once you've set the tuning and you're giving it your pitch as a CV, you have got control over the octave range of the oscillator. And then you have at the bottom there four patch points that give you a choice of different waveforms. You've got sine wave, triangle, sawtooth, and square wave. There are other things that this module can do, and we'll get into those a little bit later on in the video. So that's the 921, pretty standard as oscillator modules go. Now, the 921A and 921B are designed to be used together. It's the 921A module that you give your pitch CV to, and it's the 921A that has got on it the sort of the master tune potentiometer with the wide range of frequencies that, that you can set on it. However, it's the 921B that has the octave range control, and it's the 921B that gives you your choice of waveforms. Again, you have the same choices as the 921. You've got sine wave, triangle, sawtooth, and square wave. So what is the point in using a 921A plus B combination as opposed to just a 921 on its own? Okay, so let's turn back to the modules that I've got set up here in my case. Um, I've got two 921s, as you can see here. I've got a 921A, and I've got two 921Bs. Now, the beauty of the 921A and B combination is that you can use multiple 921Bs with just a single 921A. So if you think about a classic monosynth kind of setup, and I'm thinking of a mini Moog Model D, for example. There you have got three oscillators. They all will, by default, follow the pitch of the keyboard. So as you play the keys, they're all following that pitch. However, you've got the opportunity to detune those oscillators from each other, set different octave ranges, and get out of them different waveforms. And that is what you get with a 921A and B combination. Here I've got two oscillators but I could have many oscillators. Um, and I can set the pitch just the once, set the master tune just the once, but then I can detune these uh, 91Bs away from each other with this control here that they each have. I can set their octave ranges separately, and I can choose which waveform I want separately. So that is the purpose, or the primary purpose, of the 91A plus B combinations. Right, so let's have a go at patching up the 921A and B modules. Let's see how it works. If we take a look at the 921A, we've got six patch points on it. We've got three down the right, three down the left. Now, the ones down the right, we don't care about for the time being. They are relating to pulse width modulation, so we'll get onto those later on. The ones we care about here are the ones down the left. They are relating to pitch control voltage. We've got two inputs and just the one output. 
Now what I've got here with my blue cable is coming from the keyboard here, so it's going to give the CV for the pitch. I'll put it into one of those inputs. And it's weird, isn't it? We only have one output, uh, even though we're supposed to be actually using it for multiple oscillators. Um, but the way we work with this is we daisy chain them together. So I'm going to take a cable out of that single output. If we look at a 921B here, these two, they're linked together. They're, they're like a, a buffered multiple, basically, and they're labeled 921AB link frequency. So what we do with them is we take the output from the 921A into either one of those, and then we can take the other one and link it to the next, and the next, and the next. So we're daisy chaining them basically together, and that's how it works. Now, let's just hear what's going on here. This is a gray cable, which is going out to my amplifier. I'm gonna pop it into the triangle wave of this first one. There you go, now we're starting to hear that. And if I play the keys on the keyboard, you'll hear that it's tracking the keyboard perfectly. So we have got a master tune control here, which can either be a sort of a fairly fine tune in semitones. Uh, I think it's 24 in total. Yeah, that's what it says. So octave down, octave up. Or with this white switch here, it can be a much, much wider range. So I, it goes way up beyond what I can hear. And then all the way down to LFO. So you've got a massive range on this oscillator. I prefer to keep it uh, with the, the finer control for, for better tuning. So that is the oscillator driver set up with the master tune, and you'll see that each of the 91Bs also has a potentiometer for tuning. That's so that we can detune them from one another. Um, so let's take a second gray cable, which is also going to my amplifier, and let's plug that one into the triangle of the second. There you go, now we can hear both of them together. And this is where we will use the individual detune controls tune them properly. Like that. Right, so let's turn our attention to these 921 modules. Um, so the difference basically between two 91Bs set up like this versus two 91s is that the 91Bs are going to be following the pitch, the one single pitch CV that we've given it. Um, now, if you want to achieve the same thing with very slight detune or whatever we want to do with 91s, then we're going to need two of these. We're going to need to basically use a buffered multiple of some kind to be able to duplicate the CV from here and pass it into each of the 921s separately. That's the downside of using 921s as opposed to A and B combinations. However, there is a module that comes to the rescue, and it is this one here. It's called the CP3A-0, uh, otherwise known as the Oscillator Controller Module. And this is what we will set up next so that we can achieve the same thing with these two 91s as we can with the 91 A and B. Right, so let's see how this Oscillator Controller Module works. It's really quite similar to the oscillator driver in as much as we now give it our CV for pitch into one of these inputs. There are in fact four inputs in total which you can control with these switches whether they're on or off and one of the inputs has got an attenuator on it. So it's a module for basically gathering together lots of control voltages to um, modulate pitch with. So we've got our four inputs, and at the bottom we've got three outputs. So this can be driving three different 921s uh, or other modules if you want to. So I've patched the control voltage into this module. I'm going to steal one of these red cables. So out of there, into the first 921, and I need a slightly longer cable, and then out of there as well into the second 921. So now we are giving that one single pitch control voltage to both of the 921s. So this patching is achieving the same 
as the 921A plus B combinations over there. So just one more thing to cover before we get on to some of the more advanced features of these modules, and we're talking about the sort of the choice between 91s and 91A plus B. Uh, well, something I've discovered really is that there's nothing really fantastically special about this 921A module at all. If you give it a control voltage to set the pitch, um, you can actually just get that exact same control voltage out of it. Basically, all this module is doing is taking that control voltage and then shifting it potentially up or down by quite a lot, obviously, because this has got a large frequency range with this potentiometer. But that's all this is doing is taking a control voltage and then shifting it positively or negatively with this control. There's nothing to stop me from taking my control voltage for pitch from my keyboard or sequencer and actually supplying it directly to a 921B on its own and then daisy chaining that signal to more than one oscillator. Let me just uh, play you what this sounds like. So I've taken the pitch, the blue cable, directly into this 921B and let's listen to the triangle wave. There you are, it's tracking the keyboard perfectly uh, and we can tune it. The only downside really of doing this without the 921A is that you have got a limited range of tuning. You've got 12 semitones up, 12 semitones down, but otherwise you actually don't need this module in order to just play these oscillators. And as you can see I've got this second oscillator here daisy chained as before. I'll take the other grey cable and let's listen to it. tune them. You can do that, no problem at all. Okay, so let's check out the LFO, the low frequency capabilities of these oscillators. Uh, and it's not as straightforward as it might first appear. Um, now what I'm going to do for this demonstration is I'm going to use this uh, oscillator here on the left, this 921. I'm going to use it as a regular oscillator, uh, just to play a regular tone with. And the reason I'm going to do that is that I'm then going to modulate the pitch of it with the other oscillators and hopefully we'll be very easily able to hear how slow or fast that modulation is. So I've got this blue cable coming from the keyboard, the pitch of the keyboard, into this oscillator on the left. Let's plug in the grey cable so we can hear it. There you go. Um, and now let's modulate the pitch with one of the other oscillators. Now we'll start with a 921B, this one over here. So I'm going to take its triangle wave and modulate the pitch. There you go, right. So first things first, let's slow it right down. So we have a octave range here, it goes down to 32 feet, but it does have a low mode. Uh, so let's switch to the low mode. That's still quite fast, but we can tune it down. So we can tune it down using this frequency control here. There you go, that's how slow it goes. It's not very slow. It's good enough for vibrato or a tremolo effect, but not very slow as far as LFOs go. However, what we can do is we can use the 921A module to affect its pitch. So let's do that. Let's hook it up like we would as normal. Take the CV out from the 921A, pass it into the 921B. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune the 921A right down. And that's now pretty slow. That's, I mean, it's not the slowest LFO in the world, by any means, but it's very useful to be at that speed. So by combining the A and the B together, we can get it to go as slow as that. Let's try the 921 now. Okay, 
So the 921, let's take its triangle output and modulate the pitch. Now in terms of the octave range, we don't have a low mode here. It goes down to 32 feet and that's the lowest it goes. And as you can hear, it's not really slow at all, is it? However, we do have this switch here and it switches between audio and sub. So audio rate and sub. If we switch it to sub, now we get a lot, lot slower. And we can go slower than that by pitching it down. Now this is incredibly slow. I actually don't know how slow it is. I need to check the documentation, see if it's actually mentioned anywhere as to how slow this goes. I haven't uh, had enough patience to time it. But it's very, very slow. Um, so sub mode here is really great. If you want to use one of your oscillators as an LFO, then sub mode on the 91 is the way to go. However, you may have heard a slight problem. Let me speed it up a bit. That is not the sound of a triangle wave. It's the sound of a broken triangle wave. Uh, it's also the same with the sign. That's also a broken sine wave. It's not smooth at all. However, the sawtooth is fine and I've used a small cable here but if I could stretch it the square wave is also fine as well it's a problem in sub mode with triangle waves and sine waves now as far as I can tell this is not a fault of these modules it is a limitation or side effect of the circuitry inside which is a copy of the original Moog design. Um, now I'm going to show you in a minute what these waveforms look like on an oscilloscope so you can actually see what I mean by a broken waveform. But basically you can calibrate using the little trim pots on the back, you can calibrate the shape of the triangle wave and the sine wave to fix this problem. But if you do that and fix the problem then when you go back to normal modes, uh, normal speeds, uh, you'll find that your waveform is broken at normal speeds. So you can't have it both ways. You either have nice waveforms at normal rates or you have nice waveforms at sub rates, but you can't have them both. And this is a real, real shame uh, because it means that the 921 could have been such an amazing oscillator to be used as an LFO for really slow modulation effects. Um, but with a sine wave or a triangle, which is the most commonly used waveforms, um, for an LFO, you, you're going to have problems. It's not going to sound right at all. If you are the owner of an original Moog modular system that has 921 modules in it, then I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Do you have similar issues in sub-mode with your waveforms? triangle waves and sine waves in particular. I'm not talking about a you know a nice expensive premium clone in 5U format. I'm talking about the original Moog modules, the original 921s, because it seems to me from everything I've read that you'll probably have a similar kind of issue with those modules as well. But I don't know because I don't have them. So That's where we have, let me find it, another choice. This particular uh, module here, it's called attenuators, but it's actually not the only uh, module in the System 55 range that's called attenuators, but it's a CP35. Um, now basically, if you think about an oscillator, setting its pitch, control voltage, um, normally that control voltage would go from 0 volts all the way up to 5 volts because in a system like Eurorec, which is 1 volt per octave, that gives you a nice 5 octave range of accurate pitch for playing notes across a keyboard or on a sequencer. But what if you were to send your oscillator a negative voltage? Uh, actually go below zero and send it a negative voltage. What that would do is actually slow down the oscillator even more. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this one up and then let's see how it affects the LFO modes of these different modules. Okay, so the CP35 is in place. Now our possibilities are becoming greater and greater. We could use the CP35's minus six volts directly into one of the 91Bs, or we could use the minus six volts into the A and A and B combination, or we could use the minus six volts into one of the 921s on its own. Let's quickly run through those different options. So let's listen to our oscillator here at the end. And we're going to, first of all, just use the 921B on its own. So let's modulate the pitch with the triangle wave. So that's on low, tuned down as far as it'll go. Not really, not really low at all, is it? Now let's take this minus six volts and apply it to the 921 AB link frequency input. It's quite slow, but not, not particularly slow, but obviously better. Now let's try the A and B combination together. So we'll leave it actually out of that particular oscillator. We'll take the control output from A into B, which already slows it down. Now let's take the minus six volts and go into the CV input of 921A. That's incredibly slow, isn't it? Obviously we can speed it up by just turning up this dial here. But yeah, that is very, very, very slow. So you can get incredibly slow, low frequency oscillation with an A plus a B together and apply the minus six volts from the CB35. Okay, lastly, let's try the minus six volts against the 921 that we've got over here. So I'm gonna take the triangle wave out of this 921 and pass it into the CV input of the one next door. Let's go down as low as we can. That's 32 feet and tune it right down. That's as low as it goes. And now we apply the minus six volts to one of the CV inputs. It's not quite as slow as the A plus B combination, but it's still a very slow LFO, isn't it? So we've got lots of choice here, lots of choice. There is no clear winner. Uh, it's a shame that the sub mode doesn't work for two of the waveforms, um, but with this option here, the CP35, we can slow down any of these combinations of oscillator and get LFOs out of them. It's unfortunate, this is a big module, as you can see here. Uh, it would be nice if there was just a little skinny module that gave me minus six volts, but as it is, this is a big module. Obviously, it's got four attenuators, which are great to have, two sets of multiples, and it's got plus six volts as well. But you need to consider the size of it uh, when it comes to you know mapping out what you're gonna have in your Eurat case. Okay, let's look at the other features that we have on these oscillators. Uh, let's look at synchronization. We have, if you see here on the 91B, we have a sync in patch point, and then we have a three state switch above it called sync. We've got strong and weak or none in the middle. So let's have a go at syncing this oscillator. So I'm just gonna link it up as normal with the 921A so I can give it a pitch. I'm gonna put my gray cable in so we can hear it. 
Okay, and now let's sync it to the oscillator next to it. So let's just take, the, say, the square wave, pass that into the sync in, switch it to strong, and now we have that sort of classic tearing sound. Obviously, I don't have any envelope generators here or anything to uh, to modulate that to give the right effect. But there we go. That's classic sync. So we have strong, and then we have weak. And I can't remember the definition of weak and how it works. It's quite complicated, but it's a slightly different effect. Okay, so let's look at synchronization with the 921 oscillator. Now it's dealing with this section here. Uh, we've got two trigger inputs, a V trig and an S trig, and we have a potentiometer here called clamping point. Now I actually did a whole video dedicated to this section of the 921. Um, I'll leave a link to it in the description below, so please check that out if you want to know some detail about what's going on with this section here on the 921. But basically, very, very quickly, when you pass a trigger signal into the oscillator, it will reset the phase of the waveform. Um, and the clamping point is specifying at what point in the phase does the waveform then continue after it's been reset. So you can basically use this to reset the waveform to a consistent starting point, and you'd normally use it by passing in a gate as a trigger, um, so that with every time you hit down a note, you get a very clean start to the sound. And it's great for leads and it's great for basses. But you can use it actually to sync to oscillators. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how to synchronize uh, the frequency of one oscillator uh, using the frequency of another one. Now there is a slight uh, trick to doing this and it's something that is a feature of the uh, the 921 oscillator which I haven't mentioned yet. And that is we have this section here on the right it's called aux out waveform. So as well as being able to get at the individual waveforms down here at the bottom with these individual patch points we can also get waveforms, a waveform of your choice and there are more than the four using the selector here, uh, at these outputs, you can get it positive or negated, and or inverted rather, should I say. Um, and there is an attenuator here, a level control. So this is cool for being able to get um, an attenuated uh, signal out of an oscillator for FM modulation, for example. It's nice to have an attenuator here. And actually, I'm a bit lazy when I'm using these oscillators. Rather than use these at the bottom where I have to repatch if I want to change waveforms, I actually just come out of here and I can just fiddle around with a switch and choose my waveform that way. So it's nice to have this section here, but there is a very specific purpose for this section. Now, all of these waveforms are bipolar. They go above zero, through zero, and below zero, as you would expect any waveform to do. However, with this aux section, the square wave in particular is unipolar. It goes from zero, positive, and back down to zero again. And that is an incredibly useful thing to have, uh, to be able to have a unipolar square wave, especially if you want to modulate pitch with it. You can very accurately set you know, the two pitches that you are creating by modulating with a square wave. Very, very useful thing to have. Now, the reason why I'm pointing all of this out right now is that this unipolar square wave is, in effect, a trigger. It's, it's, it's becoming positive enough to behave as a trigger, so we can use it to actually synchronize this oscillator via this trigger input here. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'm just going to take the grey cable so we can hear um, this first oscillator, like that. And then I'm going to take a patch cable out of the aux output. I'm going to choose square wave, or pulse, doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to then plug it in as, doesn't matter, B trig, S trigger, it doesn't matter. Um, and as I turn this up, And 
speed it up enough. You'll hear we get that sync sound again. You get some really interesting effects out of doing this. So that's another way to synchronize these. There's a limitation in terms of the frequencies that it'll work at, but higher frequencies are certainly better. Right, so one thing that I alluded to early on with this uh, 921A and B setup here is you can use it regarding pulse width modulation. So let's just talk about pulse width modulation across all the oscillators. Um, let's take a 921 first of all, the standalone oscillator. This section here is regarding, uh, well, it's called rectangular width, but the, the width of your square wave. You've got a manual control um, for setting the width and you've also got two CV inputs. So very, very standard stuff with the 921. When it comes to the A and B, um, there is no manual way of setting the pulse width on each of the 921Bs at all, uh, but you can modulate. You've got a couple of width um, inputs here. But the idea with these width inputs is actually that you drive them from your 921A. So remember right at the beginning I said that there was left hand and right hand uh, patch points on the 921A. The right hand patch points are relating to width. So you can actually set here manually the width with this control and you can modulate the width with these two CV inputs. And the combination of your modulations and what you've set here manually is then available to you out of this patch point. And again, you would daisy chain, you'd take that output, you'd apply it to your first oscillator, then take it out of that oscillator and apply it to your second, third, or fourth, fifth, etc., etc., etc. So with this setup, you can uh, synchronize, if you like, modulation of um, pulse width across all of your. Uh, oscillators at the same time. Okay, so last but not least, I think the only thing that I haven't covered really on the front panel here is this AC and DC mod input on the 921Bs. Um, I have to confess I haven't used these patch inputs, I haven't found the need to, to use them yet, um, but I believe that they are frequency modulation inputs. So that means that rather than going through the 921A and having consistent frequency modulation across all your oscillators, uh, what you can do with these is modulate them independently. Now AC and DC, I am presuming, is the difference between bipolar and unipolar in terms of expected modulation signal. So that ended up being a rather long and exhaustive and exhausting look at the oscillator modules in the Behringer System 55 range. Um, I think as you'll see there, your choices are not always clear cut. There are many ways to achieve the same thing. Um, and that's kind of a common theme with Eurorack Modular, to be honest with you. Um, and now when I bought my first set of modules uh, for the System 55 range, and that was back at the beginning of the year, um, I didn't know very much about them at all. I had certain assumptions. I had an assumption that in order to use a 921B, I needed a 921A, and that is not the case. And I assumed that if I wanted any of these modules to act as an LFO, then my best choice would be a 921, and that is not necessarily the case either. Um, so, you know, I, I've kind of learnt as I've gone, but at the beginning what I wanted to do, uh, what I thought was the right thing to do, was actually to standardise on 921 modules because I wanted the flexibility to be able to set their frequencies independently if I wanted to, sort of like create paraphonic synths and polyphonic synths. I wanted to be able to use oscillators as LFOs whenever I needed to, uh, and so my assumption was go with 921s. Uh, but as it is, the reality, as I've hopefully shown you, is that there are many different ways to achieve the same thing and there are pros and cons with each of these modules. Um, so what I've ended up doing is going with a mixture 
I've got some 921s, they're good for certain things. I certainly like the resetting, the oscillator uh, reset uh, that you get with those. Um, I like having 921Bs because actually you can just use them standalone, no problem whatsoever. Okay, so a bit of a news flash. I'd actually finished recording uh, this video, but I've since found a way to fix the broken waveform issue with the 921 oscillators when they are in sub mode. Now this is not a permanent fix, it's a fix that you have to do every time by patching it. Um, I'm just showing you a screenshot here. Uh, you'll see there that there is a cable coming out of one of the aux outputs and going into its own trigger input, the V-trig input. Um, now what I'm doing here is I'm actually getting the oscillator to reset itself. And by doing that, it allows me to then adjust the clamping point, which is actually adjusting the starting phase of the waveform every single cycle. So I've got here on the AUX section, I've chosen a pulse width uh, waveform uh, at maximum gain. And I'll just play the video now to show you what happens as I adjust the clamping point. So you'll see there that we can actually completely fix the waveform and make it a proper triangle wave again. And this will work for a sine wave as well. I'll just show you that. So there you go, both waveforms are fixable, just with one simple little cable. Um, ideally, you would have an oscilloscope handy so you can see exactly what you're doing, but I guess you could also just use your ear and listen for a smooth modulation effect. So there you go, that's the end of the news flash. I'm very happy to have found a solution to this particular problem because it really was bugging me. Um, I really do hope this has been interesting to you, this video. It has been rather pedestrian. It's not been particularly exciting. Uh, no music whatsoever, um, but an awful lot of information to get through. That's it for this video. Until the next one, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. If you like this video, then please consider liking it by clicking on the like button. And please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for future videos about the System 55, other Eurac gear and other synthesizers. Until the next one, thanks very, very much for watching.